But now what we're going to do is we're going to examine the so-called RL circuit. You see, we have R, L, and C. L is the newly introduced element. We had only R and C before. We can combine all of them together, or we can also combine only two of these three together in a circuit. If you take two out of three, how many combinations do you have? Well, you have RC, you have RL, and you have LC, right? These are the three possibilities. We already studied RC, RC circuit, charging, discharging, right? RL is what we're going to study right here, and LC we're going to study a little bit later in this chapter. And of course, after that, we also are going to study R, L, and C, put all three elements together in the same circuit. So let us now study the so-called R, L circuit. It basically consists of an inductor. By the way, this is a symbol of an inductor, okay? Take a look at the difference between resistor and inductor. This is shaped like a solenoid, you know, and here we get sharp T's. This stands for a resistor, okay? Now, of course, in reality, every element there is no such thing as a pure resistor without, with, without any inductance, and no such thing as a pure inductor without any resistance. You have a little bit of everything, okay? But for simplicity, let's assume that we have a pure res redis resistor here with no inductance and a pure inductor with no resistance. We put them together in series with an EMF, okay, with a battery. And at t equal to zero, we close the switch, and of course, a current will start to flow. What I want to know is, how does the current change as a function of time? Okay, how does the current change as a function of time? Now, we studied RC circuits before. We know the current, uh, you know, there's a charging current, right? Which went up, actually went down. It started out really strong. If you had a capacitor here instead of an inductor, it started out really strong and gradually diminishes. It became zero when, uh, when the system became fully charged. So, in our case, what we have here is an inductor, not a cap not a capacitor. And what this what difference does it make? How is the current I going to change as a function of time? Well, we can begin this by assuming first of all there is no inductor, just a wire. The only other element is the resistor. It's a pure resistive circuit. And if that is the case, the moment you turn on the circuit by closing a switch. All of a sudden, the current would jump from zero to what? To the to a final value, which is epsilon over r, right? That's it. So you have, here is epsilon over r. That's the moment after you close the switch. But the moment before you close the switch, it was zero, okay? So this is epsilon over r. It There's a sudden jump from zero to epsilon over r. Of course, that's when there is no inductor. How does the inductor change the behavior? Well, remember, for an inductor, the inductor doesn't care how much current you push through it. It doesn't fight against you at all, but it doesn't like any sudden change, okay? You have to overcome the induced EMF in order to power a current through, and the induced EMF has a magnitude of what? Of L D I D T. you see that? It doesn't care how much I there is, it does care about the IDT. It will never allow an abrupt change in current because that would mean the IDT will become infinity at that moment. You have to overcome an infinitely large self inductors, you know, induced EMF, which is not possible because this is not infinity. Okay? The battery doesn't provide an infinite EMF. So such a sudden jump is not gonna be possible in the presence of an inductor. Okay, in the presence of the inductor, the current can only change at a finite rate. You cannot change it infinitely fast. So you can imagine something like this. The current will have to start from zero, doesn't jump to infinity, rather it goes up like this, and gradually, of course, eventually it will reach epsilon bar. Okay, so we expect the current to go up like this because the inductor limits the rate of change of current. Okay, otherwise you have to overcome infinite EMF. So, exactly how does this current behave as a function of time? Well, let's see here. We can apply Kirchhoff's rule. In this case, uh, we have an epsilon, which is to be divided between these two. Okay, so we have epsilon equals to epsilon L 
plus what? Uh, a resistor, which also, you know, you also need an EMF uh, over that, so it's VR. Okay. Okay, now let's see. Suppose I close the switch at t equal to zero, then a current starts to flow, right? A current starts to flow. And the current is going to increase over time. There's nothing that stops that. It's just that how it increases. It does, it's not abrupt, but it's going to increase over time. So the idea, the idea is positive. So you're driving a positive, you're driving an increasing current through it. There will be an induced EMF over here. And it's like that. Okay, it's going to fight against you. And in order to, in order to overcome that, part of the EMF produced by the battery will have to be applied here. It's just like in order to overcome the resistance, you can apply a positive and negative. You're going to have to drop some EMF there in order to drive the current through. Okay, how much current, uh, how much, what part of EMF you have to spend between here and there? Well, that is proportional to di dt, right? So I can write this as L d i d t. This is what you have to overcome. Okay, and the next one is VR. What kind of potential difference do you have to drop over the resistor? We know that it's I times R. Okay, it's I times R. And then epsilon is a constant, right? We can solve this differential equation and find I, and you know, intuitively, you know, it has to look like this. We've done this many, many times before, similar differential equations, and we know that uh, the solution in this case should also be an exponential function because once again di dt and i should have the same functional form that is the only way they can add up to a constant independent of time okay so i based on our, our intuition i know it's i maximum one minus e to the negative alpha t it's going to be something like that okay i maximum as we know should be epsilon over r if our if our analysis here is qualitatively correct it has to be epsilon over r and this alpha tells you how fast it rises okay a large alpha means it rises quickly and a small alpha means it does that slowly of course that alpha should depend on L and R right okay now before we do this calculation to find I maximum and alpha we already know what I maximum is it's, you know we expect it to be epsilon over R do we have an idea what alpha should be okay what alpha should be well we can always solve this equation and see alpha but if we can predict sort of what alpha should be before we do any serious calculation that shows that we have the right physical intuition right so what kind of hints do we have for the expression for alpha well we can often write alpha as one over tau alpha has a unit of one over time and tau is some sort of time constant just like you know the time constant for rc circuit is just r times c right um, we can think of tau here as a time constant for an RL circuit. A large tau means that it takes a long time for the current to rise to the final value. Okay, so what do you think tau should depend on? Well, think about it. If everything else is the same, but I have a large inductor. Okay, so inductance is very large. The large inductance means that it is difficult to drive a variable current through it. So the current can only increase very, very slowly, right? Otherwise, you have to overcome a very, very large EMF from the inductor with a large L. So therefore, the current has to go rise very slowly, so you expect tau to be long, okay? So tau should increase with L, okay? Now, what about R? What about R, if, if everything else is the same? Well, look, this guy, the inductor, cares about the IDT, right? It wants to limit the change of current. This R doesn't care. No, it doesn't care about any changing current. It just says how much current there is. Okay, it doesn't care about di dt. So this guy is sensitive to changing cur to, to current changing over time. This guy doesn't care about how fast the current changes. Just care about how much current there is. So if you look at this rising process, the only reason why it has to rise over time, not instantaneously, is because the sensitivity of this element to a changing current. But this guy doesn't care about changing current. So therefore, a larger R means that, relatively speaking, this element is more important. Okay, And since it doesn't care about changing 
current change over time, you expect the larger R to make this process faster. Make sense? Because if L is if R is really, really large, then the circuit is dominated by the resistor, and the resistor doesn't care how fast the current changes. Just want to get to the final, re final current, and that's it. It's just this green line, that's it. Okay, so you expect the, ta the time constant to increase with L and decrease with R. And the simplest possibility to accommodate both would be something like this, L over R. Is that right? Well, to see if that's right, we can check one thing first, and that, what is that? before we do anything else. What's that? It's the dimension, right? Okay. Does L over R have the right dimension? Which is what? Which is time, right? Can we do that? Well, we can do that because we know L is the is is the um, self self inductance and do we know what the uh, the unit of, of, of L is? It's Henry. What is Henry anyway? Well Henry as we can what we can do is we can uh, you know we can uh, Look at examples like that, equations like that, so we can replace Henry with other more familiar units, so we can check if this is right. So let's check. The dimension of L over R, okay? Let's check that in SI system. Let's see. L, volts times time divided by amp, right? So you get volts times seconds divided by amp. Now, resistor, ohm which is what? Volts over amp, because it's voltage over current, right? Ohm's law. You see, V and V cancels, A and A cancels, which you're left with time. So this is exactly right, dimension-wise at least. Okay, that gives us more confidence that we might actually get something like that. But, but of course, don't be surprised if there's, a, if there's a two here, or you know, one over third, you never know. Okay, that you never know. But at least that is good intuition. Now, to finish this calculation, Let's plug this into here. Okay, let's plug into here. We got epsilon equals L di dt. What's the idt? Di dt. Let's take a time derivative. I maximum. Alpha or one over tau. One over tau e to the negative alpha t. Okay, that's this term. Plus the next term I r. I i is right here. I maximum r one minus e to the negative alpha t. Okay, now. Time dependent term, time independent term, I'm going to collect them together. This is time independent, which I move to the other side. So epsilon minus i maximum r equals to what? Take that constant time variable term out e to negative alpha t i maximum. What do you have left here? You have L over tau, right? L over tau. What you left there? Minus r. That's it. Okay, what's the next step in the, in the routine? We've done it many times, so you know. This is the time variable term. This is a constant, this is a constant. Okay, so one side is a constant, the other time is time variable, the other side is time variable. Impossible, unless what? You get zero here and zero there, right? You know the drill. So, that gives us two equations. The first equation says that I maximum must be equal to what? Epsilon over R, that's exactly what we suspected. See, right here. So eventually, it is going to rise, the current is going to rise to the final value uh, as if the inductor never existed. Of course, when the when the current reaches a saturated value which does not change over time, there is no DIDT anymore, and the, then the uh, inductor behaves like a wire. Okay, just, you know, let, let the current go right through. On the other hand, look at tau. L over tau minus R equals zero, so therefore, tau equals what? Equals L over R. That's exactly what we thought it might be. L over R. Okay, so this is right. So, this is the uh, solution to the problem of RL circuits. So, what is the key, what is the key feature in this problem once again? If you compare to this, to the case without the inductor, the inductor limits how fast the current can run through it, there will never be any, uh, any abrupt, abrupt jump, increase or decrease in the current once you put an inductor in the circuit. Okay, so the, the current does not jump abruptly, it, it, it jumps, uh, well, it rises or falls gradually over time. Okay, like this.